I was a healthy individual and one day I found myself waking up in the hospital. I had been victim of a violent crime and there was surgery that had to be performed on me to keep me alive. So I went from somebody who could do a lot, who was very active all day and athletic, to someone who couldn't move and needed help to go even to the bathroom. So that's where my post-op journey and the love-hate relationship with pain started. Over the course of time, as I learned to empower myself, I found myself changing from an engineer to a healthcare professional and very much gravitated towards pain management. Um, the tips I'm going to share is from the pre and post-op surgery class that uh, I teach at UCSF because we see a lot of improvement in um, the outcomes and just the satisfaction of people when they feel prepared, like the way Alicia talked about it. Um, and we try to figure out a way to make that knowledge um, easily accessible to everybody. So we worked on building a solution, an online solution, an app um, that can make all of this information available and accessible to all as the first step in that direction. So the first question is, does preparing for surgery really help? If not, then why waste time, right? Um, so there have been a lot of studies done, over 200 studies done on um, 8,000 patients that show that it does lead to reduction in pain and fewer complications. And one thing to note is that when we look at pain management, pain comes as a symptom cluster which means if a person has pain, they're likely to get all other issues. They're going to have fatigue, they're going to have depression, they're going to have anxiety, and they're all going to interplay with each other. And this also is impacted by their treatment as well as their environment. So when we look at how we handle pain, we need to think about all these different aspects and addressing all of them at the same time. So in terms of where we start, the first step is actually to make a plan. And part of that is knowing what to expect with your treatment, uh, what to expect pre, intra, and post, and even small things like who's going to drop me there or what am I going to eat, do I have time off, results in a huge reduction in anxiety if you know what to expect and you're prepared for it. Um, I have seen that uh, I've had to give personally less, 50% less, anxiety medications and pain medications when my patients are prepared for the surgery, they know what to expect um, because anxiety and pain correlate with one another. Um, the other thing is at some point, given that you're going through a surgery, and it's going to be debilitating and impact us for some time, you're gonna feel crappy. So it's really important to have a I feel crappy plan. <laughs> So what does that mean for you? What can you do to uh, feel good or to just get through it? And then it's easier to go through that checklist of I can handle by doing X, Y, Z. Um, I had a couple of friends that I had on my crappy plan list. So I would SOS them saying, I'm going to call you and rant because that's what I need right now. Um, and a pain management plan. <clears throat> so that is going from least invasive to most invasive. What are the options you want to consider and then having that figured out for you? 